This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Like we're joined by Maxi Hughes today. Maxi, been a while since we caught up. How have you been, mate? Yeah, all good, mate. Yeah, just uh, chipping away at gym and uh, yeah, just uh, generally just getting on and that. Yeah, you said that you're ticking away. We're waiting for the fight news. I saw you've been sparring Jason Cunningham, so I wanted to start there. He's someone who you should spar as an amateur, first time sparring him as a professional, but. In a way, his story is very similar to yours. You know, he's he's had them hard nights, and now he's he's having this fantastic run. Was it nice to sort of come full circle and and spot together and, and talk afterwards? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's that sweet moment. You know, we've both we've been there. Uh, we've been, we've both been the nearly men. We've nearly we've nearly won belts, and we've challenged. You know, we've we've just come up short against them top kids, but you know. You know, both from Donny, we're both made of tough stuff and uh, we've stuck it out. We've not thrown towel in. And, you know, we always believed we was capable of winning winning belts and being champions. And, you know, that resilience uh, and that mentality has paid off for us both. So, yeah, really nice to, you know, spar and sit back and think, you know, we are, we are, both, we are the number one guys in our division, in our countries. Um, so yeah, it, it is it is really good. Lots of rounds you did as amateurs, as I mentioned, the first time you got in the ring together as pros. Though, how much had you noticed that he'd improved in that time? Yeah, it was just it's, it's strange. It's like it's like we're but like like gone back in time because obviously we thought we were, we thought we was really good then. We were we were decent uh, amateurs, so it felt a good high level spa back then in amateurs and the praise that we got from our trainers um, then, um, you know, and it's just the same now. So, you know, it's, I suppose it's the people on the outside watching in who really notice how good we are, how good we've, you know, come on since then, you know, rather than us thinking, oh yeah, he's, like, we, we notice the better, but, you know, it's, um, it's more noticeable, I think, for the people watching. Now, Maxi, I know a lot of fighters who struggle in this, the waiting time that you're kind of having now where you're ticking over, you're staying fit, but you're just waiting for that big fight news between, you know, staying busy in the gym and family life. How do you kind of handle it? Are you pretty good when you're having to wait for these dates? Yeah, you know, luckily now I'm, I'm full time. So I just like, I keep explaining to my wife, think, yeah, you know, I've got to go and I've got to go and do summer at least every day because uh, that's my job, you know. If I wasn't doing this, I'd have to go to work every day. So I think, right, this is now my job. I need to put that just that bit of time in and do something every day so that I'm, you know, like 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 sparring Jace doing eight rounds. You know, I've got nothing coming up yet, but I'm I'm sparring eight rounds, um, keeping sharp, practicing, and you know it so so when that, that news does come. Uh, I'm ready. That's that's the even you know I even had that mentality while I was working. Um, like last year when I won British title, um, I was still working every day. But you know every night I was going to the gym and just doing my bit, even though I had no date. And that's why I was able to fight and win the British title on four weeks' notice because I knew I was fit, I was sharp, I was sparring, so I knew that. A drop of an art, I could take that fight, and you know, the result, the results have got me where I am today by, by being ready, being able to take my opportunity, and um, you know, I became British champion. We see a lot of young fighters who you know between fights and go away and enjoy themselves, but but would that be your advice to just always stay ready and always stay in the gym because you never know when the phone's going to ring? Yeah, especially now, you know, now more than ever, like COVID taught us that. Um, and I was, I, sh I showed that I got, I kept getting opportunity after opportunity. And with that mentality, um, I were able to take it. And I'm in this great position now. Um, but yeah, I, I used to do the same when I were younger and a prospect. I used to think I was entitled to time off. Um, but now, you know, that, that would be my advice to my younger self stay in gym, stay ready, and, you know, work on just improving yourself to be a more rounded fighter. Um, but yeah, I'm lucky enough to have re to realise that now and that's my mentality now. And yeah, um, I would give that advice 
to to younger professionals. Let's come on to what is next for you then. One thing I want to ask you about, one of our writers had received info that there was talk about a Kid Galahad fight straight away. You came out, Staffy came out and refuted it, said, no, there's there's been nothing there. Has there been zero contact about that fight? No, absolutely nothing, yeah. And I, I was a bit surprised that the article came out, especially without confirming that with, with our side. Um, yeah, we, we'd, had, we'd had no contact about that. We were currently, we was in negotiations with Ryan Garcia. So, you know, I don't know whether that, you know, that article coming out ended up scuppering the plans for that. If they've seen that and thought, oh, he's in talks with somebody else. Um, so, yeah, the, the, there'd been zero, zero talk um, and zero um, negotiations about fighting him. With the Ryan Garcia fight, um, what is the latest with that and where do things kind of like your understanding? Um, still, nothing's been confirmed. His end, that um, who who is fighting, um, but yeah, the latest we'd heard was was Eddie was in negotiations for us, and um, it, it the latest was last week, just saying it's not looking likely. Um, Eddie's been negotiating to and from with Golden Boy. Um, I know it's taken a while, and I think big fights do and. And obviously, if they're in LA, which there's an eight-hour time difference, so yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I'm, I'm just getting informed of what's gone off, and the latest is it's not looking likely that we're going to get a fight. Mm. So yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a kicking to flat like, because it's a fight that I really, I really want, really want, and hope that you know I can get. That's that's where I'm at in my career, and I feel I've earned that shot to get them type of fights so hopefully it's not dead in water yet and um we'll just see time will tell but for now i'll just keep you know keep ticking over at gym being getting myself ready and hopefully we'll get some news shots you know soon how do you kind of manage that psychologically when you're waiting for this big fight and you've been told it could happen then you've been told it's, it's not likely to happen and you're waiting days on end for a little update. Is that tough for you to kind of try and put away at the back of your mind? A little bit, yeah. It's like I, I really got excited, you know. As soon as the news was, I was like giddy, running shoes on straight away, running in and start doing my visualising and, and, you know, I'm picturing that out, playing that out, um, visualising that and getting excited. Oh, this could come, you know. This could be the life-changing opportunity that I've been wanting. Um and then when it doesn't turn out for days, it's like it's like when you were younger, when you were texting a bird, when you were a teenager, you text her and you're like checking your phone. Why, why aren't they texting back? Why, why aren't they replying? I've texted her. Um, it was like every every time my phone beeped, I was hoping it were news on the situation. Um, so yeah, it we're, we're a little bit tough not to get too excited, but I think now now I'm experienced and I've figured it. It's like. If any other big fight news comes, it's like, I ain't going to get excited. I'm not going to let it bother me until it's signed, sealed, uh, announced, and we're in the works for it and it's close. Then I'll know, right, this is this is, this is is happening now. Whereas, you know, if that happens now and it's just talk, I'll just think, no, don't get excited about it. No, not until, not until we 100% know. Yeah, that's what I was going to kind of come on to. Is it a case for you is until you know it's definitely happening or it's definitely not happening. Are you not bothering to think about any other names still? No, yeah, try not to. Let's get me a cup of, I forgot I'd, I'd lend myself a cup of, it's been cold. Uh, yeah, just that's the fight I truly want and and, and to fights like that. Um, so uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll try not to, you know, let anything like that mentally bother me, but I'll just keep, keep going to the gym. And just keep working um, in case that phone call does come at short notice. Obviously, Ryan's a big, big name, you know, and the likelihood is they might spring it on me. Oh, yeah, do you still want that fight? Oh, there you go, four weeks' notice. So, you know, I'm not going to let that opportunity pass. So I'm going to be, you know, keep training and getting ready, you know, ready for that phone call in case the opportunity is sprung on us so that I am 
I am going to be ready. Just a few things away from yourself, Max. You want to start with Javante Davis. We saw him and Roly Romero were at each other for weeks, finally got in the ring. Stunning finish from Javante Davis. Right, stoppage yeah. in pretty much everyone's minds. What did you make of it? Uh, I'm so happy for him, you know. It wound me up a bit. Just just how nasty and personal Romero was. And, you know, I think he did a lot of people's head in. Um, it was great that the Javante didn't rise to it. He just sort of shrugged him off and laughed him off. And he did what he said he was going to do. He said, I'm going to feel him out, you know, work him out for a couple of rounds and then I'll get to work. And that's exactly what he did. And, you know, it seems Romero was still a little bit delusional after the fight saying he won all six rounds. He dominated and exposed him when, you know, in reality, there wasn't too much going on. Um, it was Romero were trying to probe and try and draw him in, but Javante showed maturity, stuck to his plan, worked him out, felt him out. And when his opportunity came, you know, he took it. Love, lovely timed counter left hand, um, you know, and it did job. It shows he's got real power and, you know, what, what a good fighter he is. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed watching that. I love watching people get humbled. Um, it's great to see. Well, obviously, lightweight division keeps on rolling. George Cambosos and Devin Haney uh, finally meeting this weekend out in Australia. Who wins yeah. and why? I'm fancying Cambosos, me. He's, um, I've been a bit just yesterday watching a lot of stuff on YouTube, like um, you know the top ranked promo videos, the interviews and stuff. And he's got the eye for me. He's got. I'm not. This is not saying Devin's not got the eye of the tiger. Um, I just feel. Like they say, you're as good as your last performance. Uh, Devon did a good job beating um, Jojo Diaz. But for me, the way that uh, Cambosos took apart um, Lopez in his back garden as the underdog, being messed about in the build-up, he had that Spartan-like mindset, which he always refers to with his Greek heritage. Um, you, know, I, you know, myself took, I take inspiration from how we handled that and how he handled himself. You know, like when Lopez beat Loma, he was back training, but he was loving the attention, loving the, you know, going out here, going out there, mixing with them. Uh, soon as Cambosos got back home to Australia, he was back in the gym, being a Spartan again, uh, absolute beast in the gym. And I know it's what, we, what we've seen on social media, which looks like that, but... I believe that's the way he lives his life. And, you know, he's got it at home. He's got everything on his terms. He's got the momentum. I know for some strange reason, he's not the bookies' favourite, but you know, don't read too much into that. But for me, Cambosos, in his mindset and being at home, I fancy him to, to get the job done. It'd be a good fight. I'm really looking forward to watching it, actually. As a, as a boxing fan, um, you know, real good, real good 50-50 fight. Obviously, Bill Haney, Devin Haney's dad and trainer, isn't going to be able to travel out for the fight. He's been denied a visa. If you were in a fight like that across the other side of the world and all of a sudden you were told your head coach wouldn't be able to travel as a fighter, how much of an effect does that have and how significant could that be on fight night? It could be, and I think it's down to, you know, I, I don't think I could answer, um, you know, unless it happened to me. I, I feel like I would... You know, I would have done, you know, if it were my case with Sean. Most of my preparations done with Sean, you know, the time that I would would have been away from him, I would be speaking to him every day on phone, you know, just going over. So in my mind, I know what the instruction is and, you know, I know the, the backups and how we need to adapt in case of different scenarios. So I would feel like my mind's on the job uh, and I would remain professional and knowing what I've got to do. Uh, to deal with deal with any possible adversities that might get thrown your way, and I would have thought you would have thought Devon uh, would be in the same position, but ultimately we'll have to wait and see how, if and how it has affected him. He might he might you know remain that professional. Always thinking, you know, I know, excuse me, I know what I've got to do. I'm just going to get it done, or is it going to be like? Shit, where's where's you know where's my dad? My dad's been at every fight where you know, looking looking around dressing room for that little bit of reassurance or just to see his dad's face. 
We don't know, but I'm, uh, we'll, we'll see on fight night. And the final one, Britain could have a new world champion this weekend, Joe Cordina, challenging Kenichi Ogawa in Cardiff. Fantastic talent, Joe Cordina. Everyone's kind of touted him as a future world yeah. champion. Got his chance. Do you think he'll get over the line? I think he could do. I'm rooting for Joe. You know, he's got his, um, he's got the homecoming, which is you know, a great advantage for him. Uh, Agawa's travelling, um, you know, fair play to him, the champion coming to the challengers back garden. So I think it, I think it's all there for Joe, you know, to go and go and take it. You know, I know he wants it. He's obviously he's got a great team. Tony Sims is trainer, um, so uh, I'm sure he'll be well up for it and. Yeah, I re- really hope he does it. All right, Maxi, uh, thank you as always for speaking to Box and Social. I'm sure we'll catch you when you've got fight news. Yes, pal, thank you.